All right, in this video, what I want to show you is the two most common mistakes that I see my students make when they're using synthetic division. And it basically can be broken down into the setup as well as the finish. Because it's very important to understand, synthetic division is not real division. Now, if we were talking about real division, we'd be talking about how many times does 2x minus 1, which we call our divisor, divide into this polynomial 4x to the fourth plus 7x squared minus 2 are dividend. And the number of times that a 2x minus 1 divides into it is what we're going to call the quotient. All right? Now, if 2x minus 1 evenly divides into this dividend, this polynomial, then we're going to call 2x minus 1 a factor. Now, if you remember our study of factors, it's very important to understand that the factors of the polynomials can be solved to be able to find the zeros. So if 2x minus 1 is a factor, then we could set it equal to 0 to find the zeros of the polynomials, or the real x-intercepts. So the first thing you need to understand when you are um, using or setting up synthetic division is that we're going to use, we're not going to use our divisor 2x minus 1. What we're going to use is we're going to use the value k. Now again, we don't really know if k is a 0, right? We don't know if 1 half is actually 0 of this polynomial. But what we can do is take your divisor, set it equal to 0, and when you solve for it, now technically if this was a factor, that would be called the 0. But right now we don't know if it's a 0 or not. So we're going to use the value k, all right? So I see a lot of times mistakes when students are setting up synthetic division. They, they won't set it equal to 0. What they'll do is if I just had like an x minus 1, they'll use a negative 1 as k. Right? Well, no, you've got to add 1 to the other side, so it'd be a positive 1. You can see here, this is a positive 1 half. If you have an expression 2x minus 1, right, set it equal to 0 and solve. That is going to be your value k. It's also important that you cannot use synthetic division if you have a quadratic or a cubic or any other polynomial to a higher power. We can only use synthetic division when our, poly, uh, when our divisor is going to be linear, meaning we're only going to have one value for our k. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to take this k and we're going to put it on the outside and we're going to kind of create like this inverted long division kind of setup, this little box. All right, now the next mistake that students make um, when using synthetic division is not taking the right values for synthetic division because again, remember, it's synthetic. It's not long division. Like long division, you take the exact value and you divide it into the exact value. For synthetic division, we're just taking the coefficients. So remember, the coefficients are going to be the numbers in front of your variables, including your constant. Now, if you notice here, I don't have an x cubed, nor do I have an x. But those are still values. Those are still variables in there. They just have a coefficient of 0. And obviously, we don't write them in there because 0 times x would just be 0. But they still exist. And for synthetic division, we have to make sure we include them. So the second mistake, besides forgetting about your coefficients, would be not including, or your third mistake, would be not including your place values. So here what I'm going to have is 4, 0, 7, 0, and negative 2. Okay? So that basically covers what you need to know as far as the setup for synthetic division. Most students do OK with the actual process of synthetic division, which I'll run through real quick. So therefore, I can show you the mistakes that students make on the final answer for synthetic division. But again, just to kind of recall, you're always going to be adding on the vertical and multiplying on the diagonal. And that's why most students like synthetic division over long division, because rather than actually dividing and subtracting, you're multiplying and adding. So in this case, I'm just going to bring down, I'm going to say 4 plus you know, 0 here, or just bring down the 4. Then you're going to multiply on the diagonal. 4 times 1 half is 2. 0 plus 2 is 2. 2 times 1 half is 1. 7 plus 1 is 8. 8 times 1 half is 4. 0 plus 4 is 4. 4 times 1 half is 2. Negative 2 plus 2 is 0. So this is cool. We actually got a final value of 0. And if you know what that is, you know that that means that 2x minus 1 evenly divides into that. So there even divides in this polynomial, meaning 2x minus 1 is a factor of the polynomial and x equals 1 half is a 0. But that's not the purpose or goal of this video. I want to show you what are the mistakes. So we got everything set up, unless you get to this point. Then a lot of students can get to this point and they say, all right, I did it, but what does it mean? And this is where students start to make their mistakes. This is where they start to break down because again, like, how do I understand this as being the quotient? Well, the way that you're going to understand this is the last value is what we call our remainder. Then we're just kind of, kind of working our way backwards into writing a polynomial. 
This is going to represent our constant. This is the coefficient of our linear, coefficient of our quadratic, and coefficient of our cubic. Because remember, to do synthetic division, we extracted the coefficients. So again, it makes sense that our answers is going to be in coefficients. We just need to now put them back together to give us a polynomial. So now I can rewrite my quotient as 4x cubed plus 2x squared plus 8x plus 4. Okay. So the first mistake is just not understanding that these are the coefficients as well as what these numbers mean and where do they go as far as writing the, um, the, the quotient um, polynomial. The next mistake especially comes from when we have a divisor with a coefficient of 2. Because if you think about this, there's something wrong with this answer here. Because if I was to look in this problem as long division problem, 2x minus 1, and don't worry, I'm not going to do all long division plus 7x squared minus 2. But there's something that's important. That's something that's very helpful about using long division. Not only can you use long division for any problem, right? But long division also doesn't give us this error. Because if I divide 2x into 4x cubed, that's basically saying how many times does 2x divide into 4x cubed? Well, and you can say that's going to be 2x cubed times, right? So my quotient should start with 2x cubed. And you can see here, this does not divide by 2x cubed, right? So what happens when you're doing synthetic division, when you have a coefficient, and again, this works when we have this coefficient of our variable x or a fraction for our k, what we're going to need to do is divide back out that 2. Okay? So you're going to need to divide each and every one of these terms by 2 to take, to take into consideration that fraction. So therefore, that will finally give me a divisor of 2x cubed plus x squared plus 4x plus 2. Now, if you did want to compare my answer with long division, you would see that this is going to be the quotient. But those are basically going to be your two mistakes that students make at the end. One, they don't know what to do with these numbers. And then two, if they did do um, the fractions, they forget to go ahead and multiply that back through for their original quotient. And then again, from the setup, make sure you take your um, divisor, set it equal to 0 to find your value k. That is what you're going to use for division. Make sure you're using your coefficients as well as using zeros for your place values. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. I have plenty of more examples of show, showing you how to um, use synthetic division. I hope you go and check them out um, in my videos down below. And otherwise, I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Cheers.